My name is Rowena Houghton Dash. I'm the executive director of the Neil Cochran House Museum in Austin, Texas. And I'm Tara Dudley. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas in the School of Architecture. I've been the executive director for um, just over seven years now. And um, I would say that the, the biggest shift for me when I came to the museum, I understood us as um, an important bedrock, as it were, um, since our walls are made of limestone rubble um, for the Austin community, um, we're one of the oldest residences in town. But what I didn't really understand because um, historically the museum had begun its interpretation in 1876, more or less, when the Neal family moved in because um, the first 20 years of the site history were tumultuous. And so we didn't really think about the antebellum origins beyond the architecture. And what has changed over the past seven years is that we've taken a really deep dive and are thinking um, really seriously about what 1855, 1856 Austin looked like mm -hmm. and the role that our site played in the city as it was developing. So you've been working with us for a couple of years now. Uh, what excites you most about working with our site? Um, the most exciting thing for me actually connects exactly what you were saying. It's being able to connect the tangible aspects of the site to those intangible aspects, namely um, identifying those who were um, in, inhabitants or somehow otherwise connected to the Neal and Cochran families, to the renters and other inhabitants of the property in the antebellum era. And that's speaking specifically to individuals who may have inhabited or come into contact with um, what we are now identifying as the slave quarters building on the property and being able to name in some cases, some of the enslaved individuals that worked on the property um, as when it was the school for the blind. And in the postbellum era, being able to connect individuals, um, both African-American and not, there were several European immigrants who worked as servants for the Neal or Cochran families and being able to not only name those individuals, but even to find um, aspects of their biographies of their lives and how they connected in a broader sense to the history of Austin in addition to the site. Uh, and so it's been really exciting to come across those individuals' names in archival materials, um, in searches uh, via ancestry.com, and in other ways, in, in particular, one example would be of a builder by the name of Thomas Hill, who may or may not have been an individual who was enslaved by the Hill family, uh, but to learn so much more about him and that potential connection, but even in a broader sense, to learn that he was one of the most prosperous African-American men in Austin in, during the Reconstruction era um, with uh, and listing in the newspaper and, and being able to find his will that was printed in the newspaper after he died in 1886. So um, again, being able to reach out into a broader context of the history of Austin has been really exciting and to be able to tie all of that information to the site itself. Yeah. So now I'm going to ask you, why do you think historic preservation is so fundamental to understanding our shared history and what do you want visitors to take away from their time on your site? I think historic preservation is so significant because it's one thing to read in books. It's, it's, it's something really exciting and wonderful to experience primary source documents and archives and things like that. I think all of us historians have that moment where we feel like we're touching the past. Um, but for the general public to actually be able to stand in the places where the people who came before us stood and, and look out and get a different sense of our geography um, and, and, and really be able through our imaginations to repopulate um, a place that looks so utterly different today. I mean, Austin is now a city of over a million people. And when our site was established, it was a town of 6,000, mm -hmm. 2,000 of whom were enslaved. And to actually be able to put your feet on our site and look to the left and see what was a freedom colony after the Civil War and look straight ahead and see what was the beginnings of the University of Texas at Austin. 
um, that's really, to me, something that connects us to the past in a way that nothing else really can. It's important to me that we all understand our shared humanity and um, that no one story is more important than any other story. And so to be able to experience our site and imagine you're any one of a myriad number of, of people, whether they were students or teachers, there are so many people's lives who have touched our site and um, it's all of us together that, that make up who we are as a culture.